What is going on guys, Mr. NASCAR back at it again with another video, and this is the Richmond race analysis. Alex Bowman gets the win after what was a very, very, very hard fought day for him and his crew. They had pit road penalty, uh, really not the best car all day, but came through, got the win. And uh, I mean, it was one, one heck of a race, not going to lie. The race overall was not entirely action packed other than some of the leader battles that we had, but uh Still, overall, good race. Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin let him off the green. Denny Hamlin won stage one. Other than that, there wasn't much event, many events in stage one. I can't remember if Ryan Newman spun in stage one or stage two. It was one of those two stages. I cannot remember. But, I mean, it was overall pretty pretty, pretty darn good race. Stage two, uh, Denny Hamlin won stage two. It looked like Denny Hamlin did have the dominant car. Throughout the entire race, he did win stage one and stage two. Uh, Joey Logano was up there, Trex was up there, Bowman was up there, Bell was up there. A lot of guys were up there. Chase Elliott actually started third in the race, and then I believe he finished thought, like 11th, 12th, 13th, one or two laps down. Richmond is not Chase Elliott's best track at all. He just, whenever he goes to Richmond, he tends to just not have a good race at all. Uh, Stenhouse had a decent day. He's had some really good luck over the season. I think he's had a top 15 in every race except the Daytona 500. I might be wrong on that. I don't know. Stage 2, though, mainly uneventful other than Ryan Newman's spin, which created some strategy. Brad Kozlowski pulled off some incredible strategy. I mean, he went... He did not pit in Stage 2 when everybody else pitted. He went full the entire time. Actually ended up getting lapped by Denny Hamlin, which was... My joy even didn't think he was going to lap. I'm like, there's no way he does not get lapped because he's like the next guy in line for Denny Hamlin. And it was just... Kozlowski got lapped. He never really recovered from that act or from that mishap. You know, stage two. It ends. Stage three comes along. I think it was the second... I don't remember if it was the longer stage of the race or not. They had two sets of green flag pit stops. First one... I believe Truex had a speeding penalty. And that pretty much took him out of contention. I think he ended up finishing 7th or 8th. But, uh, that yeah, that took Truex completely out of uh, contention. And then that w it was mainly Hamlin and Logano from there. You know, dicing it out, juking it out, whatever you want to call it. Hamlin and Logano, back and forth. Hamlin had the lead, then Logano took it through some lap traffic, and then Hamlin would close back up, and they were having a great battle. But one thing I did realize, notice about this uh, broadcast today is that Fox loved to just go away from the race, and then they love to show, like, some graphics or data or statistics on screen that covered the entire screen. There wasn't even, like, that small live box. I also realized they had a ton of commercials throughout the race. So I was like, come on, Fox, really, really gonna do this? But throughout stage three, it was mainly Hamlin and uh, Logano. They were the top two. I think Bell was in third, and Bowman was fourth. Bowman actually had a uh, penalty, uh, at the end of stage two, I believe, he had a uh, uncontrolled tire, put him back in the backfield, and uh, along with Chase Elliott, who was uh, the first car, or who got the free pass on that caution. My hair's a mess. Oh my gosh, what is my hair doing? Uh, I'm trying to remember what happened next, because my brain is just filled with Bowman winning this race, and I, because, oh my gosh, I was screaming my heart out. But after that, he drove his way, he was pretty much stayed back in 12th, where he was the entire time. For a little bit, and then he passed Elliott and got back into the eleventh. Then he passed someone else for tenth. He was basically tenth. Green flag piss offs come along. He gains quite a few positions during that. Gets back up into like six. Kyle Busch has a speeding penalty, which was a given because when Kyle Busch turned on to pit road that second, um, yeah, second uh, cycle of pit stops in stage three, he was full on drifting through turn four, trying to get on it because I think he. Decided to just pit right there, but it uh, didn't work out. He was, I think he had two penalties, but they counted as one speeding and um, commitment line violation. So a bad day for Kyle Busch. He has not had, and after he won the 2019 championship, his, his luck has just been horrible. So after that happened, Bowen was up there in fourth. It was, so then the running order of the top five was Joe Logano, Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Alex Bowman, and then I believe it was Kevin Harvick in fifth. And Bowman was working on Bell. I mean, Logano and um, Hamlin were up there. They were like 1.7, 1 second behind each other. And then third place, Christopher Bell was like 14 or 12, 
13, 14 seconds behind them. Bowman not far behind Bell, and then uh, Harvick was like two more seconds behind um, Bowman. So Logano and Hamlin are battling it out, and then Harvick starts losing the spots. Everyone starts catching Harvick. And then with about 15, no, 18 laps to go, Kevin Harvick blows a tire going into turn number one, hits the outside wall pretty hard for Richmond. Marines on a caution, which that was pretty crazy. He made a caution with 18 laps to go, and it was... Man, let me tell you, it was it was one one heck of a battle. After that caution came out, you know, pit stops happened. Denny Hamlin, I'm fr who was that? Who that was for a second? Denny Hamlin just barely beat Joey Logano out of the pits to take the race lead and be the control car for the next restart. So then the choose cone, Denny Hamlin takes the inside, Logano takes the outside, which puts Bowman in, you know, he's in third. He takes the inside behind uh Denny Hamlin. They go green and Denny or Joe Logano and Denny Hamlin, they get the jump, you know. Bowman actually has, gets a great restart from what he's had in the past, or from what he had in the race before this. And, uh, I mean, he got underneath Hamlin, I think on the second lap of that run, passed Hamlin, and then, no, I lied. He passed Logano first, and then Hamlin, and then he drove away with about a point seven five point seven second lead, for what, until about like four laps to go, within the four laps to go, bro, I was, I was just full on taking my hair out. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, I swear, if this man wrecks or gets caught up in lap traffic, left lap traffic, and Hamlin catches him, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna freaking flip out. So it's four laps to go. There's lap traffic, lap traffic everywhere. Hamlin's caught Bowman to about a point five second lead, half second lead. Bowman's getting through lap traffic, and there's one guy. I think I don't remember who it was. I think it was maybe, maybe in Priest who hell, almost wrecked Bowman. I mean, Bowman was right here. And I'm going to show you. Like, this is pre, and then, or no, this is Bowman, and then the other car was, like, right here. So, I mean, it was extremely close. Bowman gets by, and that's what created... No, it was Quinn Alf. Quinn Alf did that, because Quinn Alf is a complete and total idiot. I mean, he wrecked three cars at Texas last year from middle lane to pitting. Anyway, Hamlin closes up 0.5 second lead after that, and, I mean, I'm just sitting there. I mean, I was, I was, it was, it was a very, I mean, the battle to the finish was just incredible. It was the best part of the entire race, in my opinion. If you have a different opinion, put down in the comments. But in my opinion, this last four laps, best time, best, um, I was on my window, best part of the race. I mean, it was just amazing. And then there's a group of four, maybe five lapped cars. Kevin Harvick, Michael McDowell, and two others. Uh, Kevin Harvick gets out of the way. And so Bowman gets by two of them. He goes in between Harvick and the other two. So four wide, I think, maybe in three. And then McDowell, I'm like, bro, McDowell, do not go down, right? M McDowell stays up. Bowman keeps going. And, I mean, at that point, it was pretty much made. Comes to the line with, I think, the white flag after that. And he had to just bring it home one more time. I'm sitting there screaming. I'm just praying and hoping that he does not blow a tire or anything. Her, her, Hamlin catches him. And Alex Bowman crosses the line first, brings the 48 car back to victory lane for the first time since Dover of 2017. And it was, what a race that was. I mean, 48 car back to victory lane. Same day as Jimmy Johnson makes his first ever IndyCar start. As you guys know, I'm a big Hennick Motorsports fan. You can see my Chase Elliott flag and my Bowman flag behind me. And I mean, it was, it was great to see the 48 car back in victory lane. Alex Bowman got out of his car. He was extremely emotional about uh, William Rowdy. William Harrell, his name is Rowdy, who died in a car accident in the off season. And if you don't know who that is, that was uh, one of Alex Bowman's pit crew members. I believe he was a tire carrier, or a tire changer. I can't remember, but I mean, it was. He got out of the car and he was extremely happy, but also extremely emotional once he started to talk. And I mean, it was amazing because I, I got Bowman's um, auto club went over there. And to see Bowman get that 48 car back in victory lane. Ally's first win, too. So, congratulations to Ally. Congratulations to Bowman. All the guys at Hendrick Motorsports and who work on that 48 car. They put together one heck of a car. And, I mean, I don't know what Greg Ives told the picker to do on that last stop. But they did something to give Bowman some amazing short run speed. And, boy, did it work. It was just amazing. 48 car back to victory lane. Same day as Jimmy Johnson makes his first IndyCar start. I don't know how Jimmy Johnson did in that race. I didn't watch it because I forgot it even was on until people were posting on about it on Instagram. And I checked it. It was already over. So comment down below if you know how Jimmy Johnson did in that race. I do know he spun out. I saw someone post it on Instagram. But uh, 
Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if I should do more of these videos. I kind of like them. Kinda, I don't know how to feel about them. This is only like my second one I've done. I did one with my cousin like a year ago. But uh, let me know how you feel about it. I probably will do one after Talladega next week. Maybe. Probably will come out Monday depending on if I have to do something next Sunday night. Because I'm going to have to do that. But uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. And I will have... I got some videos coming out this week. Stop motion is being worked on. Should be done by... End of May, I'd, I'd say. Got some diecast reviews. Diecast haul coming tomorrow. So, uh... Be prepared for those. Like I said, subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.